Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and welcome back to this next video and this is the 17th video of the uh, chapter 2 of immunology in the last video we were talking about an important concept that was known as the extravasation or diapedesis and i told you that the extravasation or the diapedesis that is actually the movement of the immune cells from the blood vessel into the damaged tissue now what happens is that when there is uh, the presence of the pathogen in the living organism or when there is physical damage to the tissue, a process which is known as the inflammation that occurs in the living organism. And as a, as a result of the inflammation, the immune cells, they move from the blood vessel into the damaged tissue to tackle that particular condition. In the last video, I told you that the uh, inflammation that results in a variety of the mechanisms, for example, the inflammation leads to the production of the cytokines, that leads to the production of the vasodilation, and that leads to the uh, recruitment of the leukocytes to the damaged tissue. Now, in the last video, I've told you that when you talk about the diabetes, that is actually, uh, or the extravasation, that is actually this particular process is divided into four steps. The first step that we discussed in the last video, that was the rolling adhesion. The second step that is the tight binding that we are going to discuss in this particular video. And then there are two other steps. One is known as the diapedesis and the other one that is known as the migration. So these four steps that actually completes the process of the diapedesis and the uh, immune cells, they move from the blood vessels into the damaged tissue. In the last video, I've told you that the rolling adhesion, which is actually the uh, weak attachment of the immune cells, like the neutrophils, to the uh, endothelial cells of the blood vessel. If you uh, remember, I've told you that when the, endothelial when the endothelial cells, they get activated by the immune cells, like the macrophages, they produce the cytokine like the tumor necrosis factor. That tumor necrosis factor is actually responsible for the activation of the endothelial cells. And in the response to the activation, the endothelial cells, they are producing the P-selectin. They are producing the E-selectin. And the glycoproteins, which are present on the neutrophils, they interact with these P-selectin and E-selectin, thereby achieving the rolling adhesion the weak attachment of the uh, neutrophils, for example, to the endothelial cells. Now, that weak attachment is actually very important for this particular second step, which is known as the tight binding, because at the end of the tight binding, these immune cells, they stop rolling, and they can actually move out of the blood vessels into the damaged tissue. So, in this particular video, we are going to have a detailed discussion on the tight binding. Now, in this particular image, I am showing. I am going to show you uh, a part of this uh, vasodilation, this vasodilated blood vessels. Now, if this is the, if these are the uh, endothelial cells, so on the surface of these endothelial cells, you are going to uh, express a, a variety of the adhesion molecules. Now, one of the important adhesion molecules that is presented or that is expressed on these activated endothelial cells that is known as the ICAM1. This ICAM1 is actually the intercellular adhesion molecule 1. If you look at this term, this is intercellular. This is intercellular because one of the cells that is the endothelial cells, the other cell that is the immune cell like the neutrophils. So, as two cells, they are interacting with each other because of this ICAM1, we call them as the intercellular adhesion molecules. So, they are actually responsible for the adhesion to another cell. Therefore, this is the intercellular adhesion molecule 1. So, the activated endothelial cells, after the P-selectin and E-selectin, they are going to express this ICAM1. Just like the endothelial cells, if they are producing these adhesion molecules, there should be something on the neutrophils, for example, that can interact with these ICAM1 so that the tight attachment of the immune cell that can be achieved. If you look at the uh, surface of the neutrophils, for example, these neutrophils, 
they are going to produce these uh, integral receptors on their surface. Now, these integral receptors, they are made up of two subunits. One is known as the alpha subunit. The other one that is known as the beta subunit. So, the alpha and the beta, they are making an integral molecule. So, one alpha, one beta, when they combine with each other, that is going to have an, a complete integral molecule. If you talk specifically about the neutrophils, what they are going to express is a specialized integrin, which is made up of the alpha and the beta subunit, but the specific alpha subunit that is known as the CD11A, the specific beta subunit is known as the CD18. So when the CD11A and the CD18, they combine with each other, they are going to express, they are going to make this specialized integrin which is going to interact with this ICAM1. Now, you might be thinking that if this ICAM1 that is present on the endothelial cells, if these integrins, they are present on the neutrophils, so why they are not interacting with each other in the first place? Why are they waiting for the uh, uh, rolling adhesion? Then they are going for the tight binding. Initially, what happened is when the ICAM1 that is expressed on the surface of the neutrophils, these integrin, this specialized integrin made up of the CD11A in the CD18, this integrin is in the inactivated form. What I mean by that is that this integrin is not in that particular conformation which enable it to interact with the ICAM1. So what happens is that there are specific signaling molecules like the talin, like the kindlings and what the signaling molecule do is that they interact with these integrins they do not do that directly they interact with some other receptors on the surface of the neutrophils though those particular receptors are then going for the activation of the integrins and when those particular receptors they interact with these integrins there are conformational changes that are taking place in these integrins and these conformational changes are actually enabling these specialized integrins on the surface of the neutrophils to interact with this ICAM1. So when the ICAM1 that interact with the uh, activated integrin, what that means is that the uh, neutrophils, for example, or the uh, other immune cells, they are going to bite uh, to bind tightly to these endothelial cells, which can actually lead for the which can actually lead to the third step of the diapodesis which is sometimes also known as the diapodesis so this is how the tight binding that is going to get achieved as we are talking about specialized integrin which is made up of the cd11a and the cd18 but this integrin that is a very large family of the adhesion molecules and they are responsible for cell cell interaction as we have seen in this particular case but they are also responsible for the cell to extracellular matrix. They are also responsible for the interaction of the cells to the extracellular matrix. They are also responsible for cell to cell interaction that we are witnessing in this particular case. So this is how the tight binding of the neutrophil that is achieved and that is going to lead to the movement of the immune cells from the blood vessels into the uh, damaged tissue where it can perform its function that we will discuss in detail in the other videos when we will be discussing about the uh, uh, mechanism of action of the neutrophils. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment section. We will continue with the discussion in the next video and in the next video, I will be discussing about the diabetes.